Welcome everyone to the South Florida Open. We're here in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. This is presented by the TriFly Disc Golf. This is an A tier. I'm Sarah Hokum here with Kim Hatcher in her debut commentary. Excited to be here. We've got a really great lineup of folks here. Um, strong women's field. We've got a field of 13 this year. It's the most they've ever had in the FPO field down here. Oh, that's awesome. We got Ellen Winboom. She's also a Florida native and she uh, won last year in a playoff. Yeah, her and Raven Klein were battling it out. Sarah Hokum is also joining us this weekend. Oh, yep, both in the commentary booth and on the screen. Hoping to uh, do my best out here. It's one of the few Florida events I've played, so I'm excited. It's been a great week so far. We got Jessica Weiss out here. Awesome to have her power out here to see what happens. Yeah, also didn't compete last year, but also kind of a Florida winter winter folk. And finally, we have Kristen Nauer. She's uh, our FPO pro down here in South Florida. Playing for TriFly, the home team. So we're here at hole one. This is a par four. It's 378 feet. It's a dog leg to the right. And then it goes pretty far after the dog leg. The dog leg is really right about 230. You want to, if you can, land by these palms, and then you're going to navigate either the right line or the left line to the basket. There is OB right behind it, so don't throw that up shot too far. But this is a very birdieable hole. Just got to get off that tee. First off the tee box, we've got Ellen. She's going a forehand. She's been throwing a lot of backhands this weekend. She's just got to get past that tree. Ooh. She'll be in a decent position. She's right at the, the red tee pad. Yeah, it looked like a driver in her hand, so she was looking to spike Heiser around all of that. But, you know, first, first tee nerves, these things happen. I'm throwing a pyro. Also kind of sawed it off a little bit, but I got around the corner. Pretty happy with that position, even though I'm a little, out, I'm a little blocked. We got Jessica Weiss with a forehand as well. Comes out of her hand just a little bit early, but nice kick. Oh, drops right down. So that's a, that's a little tough. She missed the corner, Ooh, so wait. she's gonna have to do some work. We've got Kristen now, our lefty. Also hits the Ellen tree. That one is in a good position. <laughs> well planted by the uh, course designer. <laughs> Kristen chipping around the corner. Doesn't get too far forward. She'll still be in a good position for her par. Seemed like she wanted to push that just a little straighter. You know, sometimes first, first tee nerves. Again, Ellen kind of offline again. It's hard to have a second shot off of the tee pad where your foot has to land in a certain spot. Jess. Hits that palm tree. Do you know what those are called with the really aggressive um, wooden parts of the palm? I think it's just another type of palm tree. So I think it's in the different kind of palm. Family. I hit the gap, but it came up a little short. Kind of hit some shrubbery up high. My caddy Julie just stepped in randomly. I didn't even know she was going to be here, and she stepped in at the last minute to caddy for me today. Kneeling approach. Comes out a little early, but she'll have an open look. Ooh, we're going roller. Comes out of her hand pretty hot. I think that's gonna line up good. Yeah, I like that. Well executed. It's a great scramble right there. Kristen pitching up with a sidearm, gets herself a look. This is just for par. Worst sound in disc golf. Oh, the band. I feel you. Sarah Hoka. Looking for the birdie. Were you around circle one right there? I think I was at just outside. I should have probably ranged it and maybe jumped it, but Kristen also right at the edge of the circle, hits a cage. 
Left side. This is not how we were all expecting to start this round. It's a tough first hole. Yeah. You really, it's a placement shot and then having that second shot if you wanted the birdie. Just Luis for her bow. Ellen also with that unfortunate miss putt, just not a confident stroke, you know? I mean, just trying to get a hold of things right at the first, first of the round. I think that's kind of normal, you know? Solo par for the day for you though. Yeah, I was really hoping to birdie that one and then, you know, par seemed good at that, at that moment. We got hole two. It is a par three. It's about 305 feet. There's two gaps you can take. You can take the right gap on a backhand, or there is also a left gap for a forehand or a nice flippy driver approach. And also elevated basket. That one's about, maybe about 10 feet in the air. It feels pretty high. And then there's even OB behind it, right? Mm -hmm. The road, you can kind of, if you hit early and then try to throw it right under the pin, you could get in trouble on the backside. I've got a Crave in my hand. Oh, nice. I like the right gap approach. Woo, let's sing it in there. We'll have a good circle one look for that. We've got Ellen going forehand here. We're out of tee box. Looks like she's trying to hit the same line. Doesn't get full flight though. Yeah, she'll have probably just a pitch up and tap out for an easy par. Jess also deciding to go with the sidearm. And there's that left gap, a little too much, holds the line. I wonder if she was going for that left gap and just threw it too flat or if she was just, she, she just threw it early. I'm curious. Kristen also goes for that left gap and then it just turns over. She this has a little a work hard, to do. Definitely a, one of the tricky holes on the course. This Kristen. will average the third hardest on the day. Oh, really? Wow. Kristen comes up a little short. She'll have to decide if she's trying to make that putt or not on the elevated basket. Jess just laying up. Thank you. Ellen looks like a little blocked up high. Mm -hmm. Low like ceiling she on that right side. Need to follow up a bogey, a bogey. Aw, bogeys are dumb spokeswoman herself. Just Kristen, a that looked like a halfy, half bid. She was like, I wanted to try, but yeah, those are hard ones to choose on. I'm at like 28, oh, maybe. That's a great birdie. I don't know. I think elevated baskets are sometimes more fun because you just got to throw it up. Maybe it's too complicated that I simplify it. <laughs> I mean, ugh. as long as they're not all elevated, I don't mind a few in there just to make things interesting. But I don't like it when they're in a situation where the everybody ends up just laying up because of the elevation. There was a hole at Jonesboro like that. And even if you'd be at like 40 feet, it didn't really make sense to run the putt. So you do all this work to get to the basket and no, so. So got the birdie there. And Ellen again with the bogey. She's still at one over. And on to hole three, par three, 230 feet over the water. Signature hole, if you ask me. Comes up to this plateau. And there is OB, obviously the water. But then if you hit that wood, wood right before the basket, it can kick you back to the fence line, which is OB. And then if you throw it too far, there is the road on the left side. So this one is tricky to just land on in the chips. Unfortunately, that happened to me today. Um, today. I hit the, the nice planks. Ah, oh, dang. So this one plays very righty. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw a back end. It's a great flight, nice height on that too. What did you throw on that one? That's a rhythm. Ooh, caught the end edge of the wood. I wondered what happened on that. So it pushed me pretty far back. I was really close to hitting the chips, but Ellen up next, also gonna go backhand. A little on the low side, but it flips up nicely and just- Oh! Just dinks it. I thought I heard some metal. Just Great shots. 
gets the height looks like a little short. Yeah, just this doesn't quite push it as far as it needs to be. And then, of course, here, Kristen, the lefty, taking the opposite route. The local route. Oh, yeah? Is that the local route? There's a lot of space over there. I mean, that branch kind of comes down blocking your approach shot, but there's, I mean, if you're going for a three, which this is pretty difficult to two, uh, if you're going Definitely. for a three, you're not losing strokes. With how the island's situated, it's hard just to stick the island. It's a great run right there. Yeah, and that branch is coming down, so I gave it as much height as I could, but it's certainly not enough to get into the basket without more speed. Kristen in a decent position. Yeah, just pitching up, easy peasy, getting the par. And Jess's position was good, so the short coming in short is also favorable. Because then you don't have all those branches in your way up high. And then Ellen, she's like going to hit her head on the basket. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. It's a tough putt. It's a tough yeah, putt. she was due. She had a rough start, and there she gets that park job birdie. This hole played the toughest on the day. Really? Plus uh, 0.54 over par. That's, that surprises me. I think since it was so early. Mm, yeah. Yeah, we were all, you know, you're all just, just first, first round nerves and a little, you know. It's totally normal. Those are totally normal feelings. Throwing from OB over the water and trying to get onto that landing pad. Super sandy, really tries to grip the disc um, unless you hit a grass patch and then it, you usually see some big skips. And there is that OB on the backside that surprisingly comes into play. It's, it's inside the circle, it's Definitely. probably 20 feet. So, you know, if you're not quite dialed in on that second shot, Ellen up first after that amazing birdie. Looks like it turns a little bit. Puts a move on it. But that crosswind coming off the lake is, can really grab that disc. Yeah, no, you definitely had that right to left today. Sarah with the backhand. I'm going two in a row. I Got have... the height, that's safe. Yeah, I threw it plenty high. Super huh? safe. Uh, <laughs> super yeah, the, safe. The sand just But you know what, it. this hole is only like 550 feet. So, you know, you can get there with a sawed off backhand. Jess gets a little more distance, but she's pushing into those left palms. That'll complicate the upshot. And Kristen, Kristen she's got to turn it over as a lefty. And it is super safe. I give her props for throwing that like super turnover shot though, because I mean, I, you see me, I'm throwing a backhand. That's like her like throwing a sidearm over that when she's not comfortable with sidearm, so. Like, I give her props for throwing that turnover because I didn't want to throw that turnover. When I'm looking at that shot, I'm like, I'll chop Heiser a backhand up over there all day. So yeah. Ellen throws from the drop zone there on her third shot, ends up kind of on this concrete pad and still has quite a bit to navigate. You got Kristen all the way on the left. She does have a gap through the left of the trees. On her second, but throws it a little inside. There's a lot to contend with over there. I'm about 200 feet away. Very nice. Some, uh, sometimes on that lake you get that really hard crosswind and it just shoves that disc left. So if you don't play enough over the water, it's gonna be far left and it's not an easy look. Yeah, and it can push it OB easily. Chris, Very nice. Throwing it around, up and around, still around things. And Jess still has quite a bit of work here. This is a great tee shot, though. And looks like it's going to roll a little bit. She'll have a look right there. Ellen from the concrete bag. She's throwing for four. Yeah, 
Gets up there. Still leaves a little meat on the bone though. This isn't out, right? This is just... We got Jessica. She's got... Gonna go have to go the hyzer route on this putt. Through the trees. Ooh. Oh. That was a good run. That was a great run. Ellen for bogey. Sit. Ooh, and a rim ramp. And that's gonna roll further than where that, she was. Yeah, that's... That's one of the toughest when you, you're you putting mm. and then it rolls even further and you're up again. It's definitely a hard comeback. Mm. And also because she missed by just a little bit. It's not like it was a bad attempt. Mm -hmm. She just got a terrible reaction off the basket. Kristen for her par. And it's really not even that sloped of a green. You know, it was just that ramp off the side of the cage. This basket is definitely slightly elevated. Just enough where it kind of gets in your head a little bit. Nice putt for birdie. Got Ellen coming up, tapping out. Mm. Yeah, that one hurts. Right now on the score box, we've got Sarah. She's in the lead with two down, followed behind by Jessica, Kristen, and then Ellen. That triple bogey, it hurts, especially when you just picked up a birdie and you feel good. Yeah, you know what, Ellen's tough though. She's she's kind of the kind of lady that can always bounce back. This is hole five, par three, 206 feet. That's not the right distance. I think it's more like 250. I think it's about 240. I can get a mid-range down there. Yeah, I'm throwing, yeah, I'm throwing a fairway on a hyzer. So anyway, this one is a tight gap. You know, you can take the left side or the right side. There's some, a long row of shrubs on the right side that does block you if you're deep. They actually had an even longer row of shrubs last year. They definitely, I think a couple hurricanes knocked out how big that shrubbery was. So now it's, it's not as bad on that right side as okay. it was. Okay, yeah, it looks like you can put kind of through those branches. Jess is going super high spike icer. She probably needed to throw it just a little bit higher and spikier, but I like the pr uh, the approach to the hole. She takes all the gap just completely out. This is a tough hole because of the crosswind off the lake. It's going right down this alley on a hard tailwind. Kristen has a great hyzer. She has just like a really natural hyzer game. I really like watching her. It's really smooth. I love watching her throw. Ellen is going up the left side, but hits that blocker tree. It's very well placed. Definitely see all the scars it's got already on it. Harps it. it. Easy threesy. Just gotta play the par game sometimes. Yeah, usually that's, you know, I mean, that's usually my approach, to be honest. Just had a low ceiling. Kristen for birdie. Solid putt. putt. She has a great, I like her putt. She has, a, it's like nice and flat. It's like a little bit pushy, but still got some spin. Sarah I'm stoked to get that one. That's two in a row. That tree that she hit is one of the first, like, you see that when you're on the tee yeah. box. It definitely gets in your head sometimes. <laughs> Ellen Lissa with a little miscue off the putter. You know, sometimes you have those days, you know, hope, but hopefully it's just the first six holes for her and um, that she can find her stroke here on the back. We've got hole six, par three, 295 feet. The basket's going to be right on the right side of the road, about 25 feet from OB right behind this guardian tree. Pushes a low ceiling as you get closer, closer to the basket. Yeah, check out that tree. It's a banyan tree, right? And they like grow back down and back up. I think they're called banyan trees. That's Leave crazy. a comment in uh, the comments if I'm wrong or if I'm right, maybe confirming, either way. Um, I'm throwing a crave here once again, throwing lots of craves on this course. Beautiful. It's going to be a tough putt for you. Yeah, I'm going to um, take my time on that one. 
I like this whole lot. I think it's challenging. There's enough wind to make it not super simple, but still enough where you got to focus with the OB. Yeah, and the ceiling is a little bit low as you're coming in there with the OB on the right too, but certainly sets up for a sidearm. Definitely. Or a lefty, as we'll get to see Kristen attempt here um, right now. Oh, I love how low that is. Yep, Just I think so that'll smooth. do. Scoots on in there. Oh, Your turns out. are making minis. <laughs> Close. Definitely a great flip on that disc and just for it to come back in. Great shot by Kristen. We got Jessica here also throwing a forehand. Looks like she had a little turned over. She'll have a look. She'll definitely have a look and I think she'll avoid that low ceiling. From mm -hmm. there. So yeah, we're going lefty lines on this hole. It's kind of fun watching all of uh, this, ca this card because, you know, um, Kristen, local, she's a lefty. I uh, throw sidearms, so I pretend I'm a lefty. Um, Ellen throws a lot of sidearms, but also throws a lot of backhands. And then Jess, who's as 50-50 of a player I can think of. So we've got kind of a sidearm dominant group. I mean, this course is very forehand friendly. You think? Other than the water holes, I definitely think you can yeah, always right. find a forehand I feel like line. I'm throwing backhands over water and sidearms the rest of the time. Except, I mean, yeah, I guess tomorrow's course, Markham, is a little bit different. But certainly Snyder, yeah. Okay, interesting. Is the designer sidearm guy? Yeah, no. Seems like Or it. gal? Markham's also forehand friendly, though, because if you think about it, all the OB is usually on your left-hand side. Mm, true story. A couple birdies there. Jess and Ellen with pars. Kristen picking up that birdie to get back to even. On to hole seven, this is a par three. Now this one's only 215 feet, but just over this berm, you can go either left or right. And the basket is sitting tucked right up into those that tree line. There's a lot of, you can get the skip off the road for the sidearm. I think the left side is more open as a choice if you have it. Um, but the right side, as you can see in this picture, is well open as long as you hit that gap and get a skip right up into the pin. So really touchy, technical shot. This is a pyro for me. Oh, I did get the skip. I w could, you can't tell from the tee pad. Oh, you can't see anything. No, oh, you just kind of like throw it and you're like, oh, does it, does it good? No. Kristen with our lefty view. So simple. And she puts the height on it to also park it. So a couple different approaches, both on this left side. Jess is going for the same kind of shot. It's a little gassed on it, but it looks like, oh, come back in. Oh yeah. So we, yeah, we were wondering about this. We saw that happen and we weren't sure because it was still on the road. From our perspective, we didn't see that it had touched. Ellen also going sidearm. Ooh, dang. Short, she'll be in the circle for It's a still a putt. Yeah, so Jess, we weren't sure if it touched, but then one of the spectators said they, they saw it touch the inbounds area. So like we the said, roller for the bring it back in. Yeah, that was a really tough lie over there. She may have wished she was out of bounds early. But it was really thanks to that spectator that was paying so close attention and willing to speak up because we were able to give her the proper lie because of his his uh, view of it. So Jess, unfortunately, getting the bogey there. Still looking to get up first birdie on the day. And Kristen, that's three in a row. This is a great birdie. It's a good feel-good birdie, especially with having OB right there. It's a great feel-good birdie. Yeah. Sarah, we're doing five down right now. Yeah, I'm trying not to think about that. <laughs> did you know that you were doing well? or did you I mean, yeah, I'd gotten a lot of birdies and didn't think I messed up very many times. So, yeah, but definitely not trying to put numbers in my head um, at that point at all. We got a hole eight, par three, 262 feet. OB sitting right behind the basket. So most people are gonna go straight up the middle gap. Don't really see too many going way left or way right. Just kinda wanna go right at it. Yeah, this one plays a little bit different for a lefty. 
I think it definitely, um, we'll see if Jess and Ellen go sidearm or backhand. I'm curious about that because I think this whole plays to a righty backhand. I agree. I definitely, I um, think I threw a buzz today to get down there. And I'm throwing a crazy shot to try to <laughs> mimic a righty backhand and I did not do it. <laughs> this whole no one birdie all day. Really? Oh, well, mm, dang. So Kristen, Kristen and I practiced this whole together, well, practiced together on this course, and we both were like throwing really good shots at this hole, but these lines that were not working for either one of us today. I wonder if there's some headwind or something out there. Probably. So Ellen does go backhand. That makes sense. She's been working on that backhand, trying to get it in use any time she can. Ooh, yeah. A great forward skip. She's been throwing backhands pretty regularly for a while. <laughs> Her sister Sarah has been catting for her all weekend. So nice to have that kind of support out there. So Jess throwing a great shot and he's a slow down. It looked like it just was about to clip Ooh. the road, maybe come back and it just skipped right over the right. I'm pitching up with my spin. Kristen also just pitching up there. We're gonna be the lefties that walk away from this hole with the tail between our legs. Ellen with her birdie. Oh, it just teeter-tottered on her. Mm. That's tough. Ellen's not so favorable day continues, but it looks like she's staying in great spirits. And Jess takes the relief in and cans her, her par putt, so gets the, gets the three in two shots. I wouldn't change anything. Go hard right at it. I so agree. Close. You might as well, right? Oh, um, looked like she was about to slam. She's the containing her frustration very well. So I'm stoked, I'm five down, dang. I didn't th think that was possible out there. That's kind of one of those dream rounds, right? And then Kristen, local, that one. On to hole nine to par four, 462 feet. This is one of the toughest holes on the course. The first shot really plays to a righty backhand right by this tree that you see. And then you're gonna traverse this tunnel and to the green and hopefully not go out of bounds on the right side. The road comes up a little bit quick. So it's a placement off the tee with a little distance. You know, it's almost what, 280 to that kind of point that puts you in best position? Yeah, around 270 is what I ranged it today. This play is the second hardest hole of the day. This also was the backup hole. We had four card backup on this hole. Yeah. You nailed I played tree. the ricochet off the right tree. I like and that play. I think that's yeah, really it, good. It was, it was almost what I was looking for. <laughs> Here's some of the lefty approach. Yeah, a little bit low, but you know, right in the center, and I mean, just a couple inches higher, and that was a great shot. So. Early is not the worst thing because you have that nice gap right into there. Right, and then Ellen just went roller, right, and she fought all the way through the trees, right on the edge. And she will have an interesting look to try to get in position. Jess with a great rip right up the middle. That's the one. Oh, the camera. This is the shot we were all trying to throw. Whether it was shot. a lefty or a sidearm. <laughs> Kristen for her second throw. She's still kind of got to bend that corner. That low ceiling comes into play though, right on that corner. So now that pushes her to the right side and kind of pinches off her shot to try to get through that tunnel. Ellen from a neat approach, trying to just get to the gap it looks like. Laying out, putting her body on the line. That's a great, yeah, she'll have a right look. in the middle. That's so yeah, for her birdie. She has a long putt for birdie. Um, this is a matrix. It's trying to bend this through the gap. Ooh, good tree action at the end there. And Jess in the prime position.
takes the Annie. She'll be 15 feet. Easy, uh, easy putt at that birdie. That tree behind kind of helps because of the mound. It helps stop the I dicks agree. the backstop. Yeah, that's a good point. I hadn't really realized that. And I wondered how I, because I, I thought I was going to be way further left walking up to, after I threw the shot. So that makes a lot of sense. Ellen running for her birdie. Oh, wow. Just clips the page. Okay, things are looking up. That was a great birdie run. Now she's got a tap in par. Kristen to save her par. Yeah, that's, uh, I wasn't expecting to be able to get that one. That's, but that one gave me so much trouble in practice. I threw it a couple of times trying to figure it out. Jess also with the birdie. You and Jess were the only birdies on the day. Ooh. Okay. From where she was at, taking a bar is not a bad thing. Yeah, that roller, I mean, it went right into the thick. And if you haven't played here in South Florida, the thick is thick. Oh yeah, you can be 10 feet away from the basket and not have a look. So that's the front nine. Wow, um, I'm feeling like this, that's a dream round right there for me, minus six. Um, Kristen at even just at one over and Ellen at three. So yeah, let's look at the leaderboard. Definitely creating a lot of separation, separation from the field. Yeah, look at Morgan though. She's on a heater too, five down through nine. Her sister, one down through nine. You're right there at even, sweet. I thought Morgan threw more forehands than you did. She threw forehands no way. on the cliff hole. She threw a side arm on that? Mm -hmm. Oh man. And had a birdie look, it was amazing. Wow, I'm gonna have to, well, I guess I'll get to see it tomorrow maybe, I don't know. Maybe I'll, well, I'll get to see it maybe on Sunday if she makes it on the leap. Yeah, if she's still up there. We'll see, huh? The Lynn sisters, they're, they're awesome. making, making moves. They're cool. Awesome well, people. thanks for joining us for this front nine, and we will be right back for the back nine, and we'll see how this whole round uh, shapes out. I'm Sarah here with Kim. Thanks for joining us.